Concerning Commander Radio Show, Orlando CPAC 2022, and our next guest, Michael J. New, Dr. Michael J. New, is a professor at Catholic University of America in D.C. Welcome back to the Concerning yes. Commander Radio Show, Michael. Ah, thanks for having me. Much appreciated. And thank you for uh, giving us an article that you authored or want to talk about. Yes, you did. It appeared in National Review here this past week. Media outlets, they're misled on the effects of the Texas heartbeat bill. Fake news, uh, deceptive news, is that what's going on out there? Sure. That um, you know, We actually have some good data from Texas. Uh, the Texas heartbeat bill took effect in September of 2021. Uh, the month before it took effect, there were over 5,400 abortions in Texas. After it took effect, only 2,200. So 3,200 fewer abortions performed in Texas. So we have some new data from the Texas State Health Department, and the media is reporting on that, which is good, but all they're focusing on is the fact that women in Texas are seeking abortions in other states. Now, that is happening. You know, laws aren't magical, and women can seek abortions in states where the laws are more permissive. But one thing they're missing is that pregnancy centers in Texas are seeing a lot more clients. Uh, Heartbeat International did a survey in September, and they found that 41% of the pregnancy centers in or near Texas were seeing more clients. So it's true that some women are circumventing this law, but other women are taking advantage of the resources available through the great pregnancy help organizations in Texas and carrying pregnancies to term. And that's what we should celebrate, and the media is just not talking about that. Of course, the media never likes to talk about this. Right. Right. And bring up the truth that mm -hmm. people, even in Texas, do they all know and understand this bill? Well, I'm not sure they do. I mean, um, you know, this bill protects preborn children yeah. after fetal heartbeat can be detected. Yeah. You know, this after six weeks gestation. It has not stopped all abortions in Texas. There were tragically still, you know, about 2,200 in September. That's the most recent we have data. But it is getting abortion numbers down. And, you know, that's important. And, you know, uh, pro-life stuff, I always say, I wish we could do more faster. But we have made progress. And even nationally, you know, since 1980, we've got the abortion rate down by 53% since 1980. So very quietly, pro-lifers have made a lot of progress. Sometimes we can do a better job kind of publicizing and acknowledging. Absolutely. And the backdrop, though, is they, they want to pass an extremely ultra-liberal uh, abortion bill up here in Washington. I think this week, mm -hmm. yeah, I got some, some emails about that. Can you, that uh, ring bells with you? Oh uh, yes, it, um, you know I think it's all this political theater. Uh, the Republicans are going to block this, you know, but they essentially are trying to codify Roe v. Wade here in Washington D.C. Uh, that um, you know they really want to uh, pass a bill that would effectively legalize abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy, and um, you know, fairly certain it's not going to succeed. Uh, but people still need to be diligent, and you know, if you're pro-life, you know, call your congressman, call your senator, tell them that you know we should pass legislation to protect unborn children, you know, not leave them more vulnerable. Uh, but yeah, something we need to be concerned about. Democrats do control uh, majority seats in the House. Uh, they have a razor-thin majority in the Senate. We've had to play defense, which we've done. It looks like we have protected the Hyde Amendment uh, so far, which is very important. That it's important that our taxpayer dollars not fund elective abortions through Medicaid. And uh, we've held the line there. And you know, Joe Manchin doesn't always do what we want to do, but he's been good on this. He's been very clear that he supports Hyde, and um, you know, it's good that he's doing that. So again, we just need to be savvy and realize we have to play defense sometimes. But elections have consequences, and I'm looking forward to 2022. I hope that we can flip both the House and Senate, have pro-life majorities in both chambers, and really do more to build a culture of life. Right. You're talking about political theater. Uh, well, well, the Dems are coming up with uh, the, the most ultra-liberal pro-abortion probably in history. What about the National Defense Authorization Act? I mean, Russia is invading Ukraine. Uh, things are really happening, making the world hot. And our military needs funded. I just wanted to show that as a background to what's going on up in your city. Uh, please comment. Yeah, I think that with the situation in Ukraine, that should be the top priority of the House and Senate uh, this coming week. Uh, there's all kinds of things we could do. Uh, you know, we could strengthen the sanctions we have on Ukraine. You know, we can certainly uh, prove the sales of you know, arms and equipment. I think the president of Ukraine showed a lot of courage. The U.S. agreed to evacuate him. And he says, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. So I think that he's shown a lot of leadership. And again, I think some political theater bill about expanding access to abortion is an incredibly poor use of Congress's time. They need to be focusing Amen. on Ukraine and trying to do what we can to help you know, people fight for freedom in that country. Amen. Amen. Are you encouraged uh, with these bills at the state level, what you've been seeing since Texas pulled this one out, uh, and what the Supreme Court's going to do in, in 
Right. You know, other states are. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I thought the I was actually in front of the Supreme Court during the oral arguments of Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, and that involves a Mississippi law, you know, that protects pre-born children after 15 weeks gestation. And there's a chance the Supreme Court may use this as an opportunity to overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, I was at the Supreme Court that day. It was the first time that pro-life demonstrators, I think, outnumbered supporters of legal abortion. So that was very heartening to see. The oral arguments went well, I thought. Now we still have to pray. Uh, you know, okay. we have a, a good court that I think is a lot more sympathetic to pro-life laws than we used to have. But we also have John Roberts, who I think likes to compromise. And uh, I think he's going to try very hard to lobby one of those other five conservative judges to maybe pare back a bit. Maybe just uphold the Mississippi law, right. but not overturn Roe. So yeah, it was right. a good hearing, a good day, but we have to pray. You know, prayer is important. Yeah, and uh, you know, the way I see it, you know, we have six judges on the court who are abortion skeptical. I hope they use this case as an opportunity to overturn Roe v. Wade. But if they don't, we just keep saying them cases. You know, we, we will get this, you know, Roe v. Wade reversed one way or another. I hope Mississippi law does it. But if it doesn't, there's other approaches we can try. We just need to keep at it. You know, we don't be, don't be discouraged. Be persistent. It's encouraging, uh, Dr. New. Uh, that's just so encouraging. It is. Laying out uh, the pro-life agenda. We wanted to go to, to the march mm -hmm. the last month. Yeah, we did. And uh, we, we, wanted to we wanted to join some Friends of the American Family Association of Kentucky. But were you there? And, and can you describe the, that movement? And you know, it's cold weather, I know, but, but was, talk a little bit about the, the pro life march. It's an annual thing. March for Life is one of my favorite days of the year. Yeah. Uh, it's really one day pro life issues are front and center. And uh, you know, we still, and even during a pandemic, we had hundreds of thousands of people come to Washington, D.C. and really show, show their support for pre born children. So it's just always a very just happy, joyous event. There's lots of young people there. Lots of high school send people, lots of colleges send people. You know, my students from Catholic University of America were there in good numbers. I'm very pleased to teach at Catholic University. Our president, John Garvey, actually canceled classes during the late morning and early afternoon of the march. So it's not an excuse to absence. Classes are canceled. He wants faculty, students, and staff to go to the march and show their support for the pre-board. So just a very happy, blessed, joyous event, and I was honored to have a chance to take part in it. It's amazing that they actually canceled classes mm -hmm. for students, mm -hmm. particularly in the college. Yep. It used to be an excuse to absence, but one thing President yeah. Garvey has done is says, nope, late morning, early afternoon classes canceled. He that's, wants you at the march. That's amazing because mm -hmm. that's such a different mindset mm -hmm. than what we're seeing in most of the college universities and, you know, the propaganda, literally, that's being literally pushed into them it's by teachers, mm -hmm. by courses, and just by the state of mind that is so much on the college campuses. It's refreshing to see that this is going on here. You know, honey, you were in uh, Ukraine with Indiana uh, pro-life organization just before COVID outbreak. In, in, in what, that 2019, I believe. Uh, 20, yeah, 20, 2019. What, um, let you comment. Abortion worldwide. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let us learn from you. How, right. I mean, we're getting better here in the United States. I love the Texas bill, Mississippi bill. Yeah. But, uh, how about Europe? How about Ukraine? You know, I mean, you know, Europe is tough. I mean, their laws, you know, um, you know, oftentimes, you know, but they have some, in some respects, you know, their laws in some respects are better than ours. They do have gestational age limits in Europe that we don't have. You know, South the U.S. is one of seven countries, including like North Korea and China, that allows abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy. So uh, I wouldn't say Europe is a model, but they do have some gestational age limits that, you know, at least do provide some protection for the pre-born. And there's countries that are doing good things overseas. Uh, Poland has actually you know, improved their laws. Uh, Poland, I think, of all the industrialized democracies, has some of the best pro-life laws in the world. Uh, it's not completely illegal, but it's very limited. Very few abortions take place in Poland. And also, um, public health is very good in Poland, too. Poland has very low maternal mortality rates. You know, Ireland, you know, sadly, they changed their law. Abortion is you know, now legal there. But before they changed their law, they also had very good public health outcomes. You know, very few, uh, you know, low weight births, very low maternal mortality rates. You can have good public health and pro life laws. It's not either or; it's both and. and I think we learn a lot from countries that are protecting the pre born. That's good. That's good. Coming up against a hard commercial break again, but, but some closing thoughts, Doctor New. Well, I just think pro life should be optimistic. 
you know, I'm hoping for a good outcome in Dobbs, but no matter what happens, you know, we just need to keep at this, you know, living a culture of life is something we can all do, whether it's prayer, whether it's praying in front of an abortion clinic, helping pregnancy centers, we can all build a culture of life. Is, is there a website or an email where people can read your, your writings and, and uh, get in contact with you? Best thing is follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Michael underscore J underscore new. That's at Michael underscore J underscore new. I tweet out commentary on pro-life issues almost every day. Please okay. give me a follow. All right. Thank you for coming on the Chicken Mountain Reddit Great. Show. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Thank you very much.